This is World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber. World Awakenings is a podcast dedicated to opening your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how they play an all-important role in our daily life. So join Carl on this enlightening experience as he interviews metaphysical and spiritual experts to discuss, debate, and delve deeply into the hows and whys of this worldwide awakening. We welcome you to the World Awakenings Podcast. Before we start, we'd like to tell you about a special ebook written by the show's host, Carl Gruber. The Three Pillars, a simple three-step process to manifest positive and permanent change in your life. The concise 32-page Three Pillars ebook will teach you how to become a successful and consistent co-creator of your life path with the Law of Attraction. Yes, you can manifest the life you truly desire. And the ebook is absolutely free. Simply go to Carl's website, carlgruberlifecoach.com. That's K A R L G R U B E R lifecoach.com. Click on the header title About Me and get the free download today. Carl Gruber's free ebook, The Three Pillars, will positively change your life. All right, once again, welcome everybody to World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment. Uh, Yet another episode uh, filled with light and love and joy. This show is all about things uh, involving uh, spirituality and metaphysics and always have fantastic guests. One of the beautiful things that I am fortunate to do is to have guests that are in my realm of being a certified life coach. And today, uh, I'm so glad to uh, welcome uh, Charlotte Freiborn, uh, and she lives in Florida, and she is also a certified life coach. As a matter of fact, uh, we, before we really bring in here, Charlotte, I'm going to do a, a little intro of you. And you know, Charlotte is an Amazon bestselling author of Make Your Own Money Again, and uh, her new book, Fulfilled Working Mom. She is a mastered certified law of attraction life coach, which I'm jealous of because I'm just a certified life coach. I think that's cool. I do want to hear more about that. From the Quantum Success Coaching Academy and a light body meditation graduate, as well as certified NLP master practitioner in therapy and communication from Denmark. She was born and grew up in Denmark and moved to the U.S. with her husband and three kids in 2006. And besides building her own business, she enjoys hanging out with her family and friends, being at the beach and in nature, interior decorating, paint abstract uh, for relaxation, uh, cooking healthy food. Uh, You can have me over because I love to eat healthy food and reading books and listening to inspiring podcasts. She coaches moms to have a fulfilled, stress-free life, both personal and in their career. And Charlotte, what an honor to have you on. Thank you so much here. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to be here, Carl. I think it's very profound that we can meet this way and uh, like re reconnect. I mean, we met in person. We just talked about that five years ago. And I think it's very fun to do this together. Very well, profound. Thank you for having me. And I will tell our audience that um, uh, Charlotte and I are both um, uh, certified coaches via the uh, Christy Whitman's uh, Quantum Success Coaching Academy. Of course, my last episode, we had Christy Whitman on, and what an honor that is. That is, uh, Christy is uh, both uh, Charlotte's a mind teacher and mentor. And now um, we carry on the tradition. And, you know, I really want to uh, compliment you in the way that you support women. 
And I, I'm seeing this more and more, and I've had other teachers um, on, on uh, World Awakenings that are now empowering and, and um, supporting women. Women have been so suppressed and oppressed over the entire history of mankind. I love to see that women are now having an opportunity to blossom and grow as individuals rather than being dominated and treating, being treated as property. And uh, uh, has that been kind of an enlightening area for you? Yeah, thank you so much for acknowledging that, Carl, because I really think for many women, we need to hear that because often I think we as women feel very alone until we find our community with like-minded people where we can find the support that we all need. No matter what level we're at, we need to be in communities where we can have support and keep being reminded of how unique we really are. And I think it's needed. And this is, I have chosen to support women now in this time of my life, not because I don't want to support men at all. I do believe that both men and women need support, but I, I, I feel I have a lot of life experience that, that I, I want to share and be open about because or more really not because, but because I hope that it can, it can help other women out there to, to, to know that we don't have to be stuck and we don't have to, um, to, to suppress ourselves or to, to feel not enough. Um, and there are, and, and, and I, there are tools that are, there's there's an awakening happening and i mm -hmm. i just want to have conversations about that to to help more women understand that no matter where we are in life there's always hope there's always and especially when we learn the things that you and i have learned through the qsca the structure we learned it in there and and the quantum physics i mean what you talk about in this show when we start to integrate that into our life, it, it really can make a profound difference. So we don't have to feel like running in a hamster wheel or being stressed or start to detach from what's happening in our world and, and take our power back and, and have these tools to, to shift. And when we do that inner work, it will, it will shift the outer world that's the quantum physics that you well, were talking about i know a lot in this show here let me ask you this um especially now with the, with the chaos uh, of of the pandemic and all other things going on in, in the world right now i think the principles you're talking about now are are more important than ever how can not just women but men because you know um, families are isolated still, you know, at home teaching their children. I mean, it's got to be very, very hard. How can they integrate these principles you're talking about, especially now uh, in times when everybody's home together? Yeah, that's a very, very, very good question. And to be honest with you, I don't think I have the answer for everybody, to be honest with you, because I know we don't want to go in and talk about politics here, but there are definitely things there that might be worth changing in the world. Like <laughs> the way that things are being handled from on top of us. But I want to say if someone, I think people who are listening to this podcast are at a place in their life where they may have more choices, because I do want to acknowledge from my heart that I know that there are people out there who are really suffering and where right now the way to help them out of where they are now is by providing them help and support. And they may not be able to, let's say, pay right now to have a coach or, or you know, they, they, right now they're just struggling finding money for the next rent. <laughs> and so I want to be real about that. But, I also know that there are people who are in a different place where they are ready to apply the information that we have. And when they do that, they can go out and make a difference, not just 
for themselves and their family and their kids, but for other people by showing up the way they are supposed to show up. And when I say supposed to show up, what I'm talking about is that we all have, we were born with, we were born like pure, like we were born with, we're all born with pure potentiality. We are all born with the same amount of time and we are born in the same world and we are born with this uniqueness of having having this body having a brain and having a free choice of how we use our mind and how we choose to show up each day and and many of us and i can talk for myself we're born into situations in our families where our parents were not aware of this and we may have been brought up with stories and beliefs about what's not possible instead of what is possible I mean, I can tell, and this is something I like to share, especially because I support women. I, for many years, thought that I could not be an amazing mom and at the same time pursue a career that I truly wanted and desired and that felt like the right fit for me. It was, for many years, I felt like it was either or instead of both. How could I, that I could have everything in my life. I felt I always had to compromise to have something. But when I learned that, and there are some basic questions we can start asking ourselves, and now I can come back to those, but when, when I started to learn the basics of everything about taking responsibility. So I don't know if, if you don't mind, I can share a little bit of my story maybe for people oh, to better absolutely. understand. Yeah, be, be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know a lot of this is, is in your, your book, uh, making your own money again, which. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, I got a and, chance to read much of it already. So, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I share, I'm sharing more stories also in my second book, but I was, my mom got pregnant with me and it was not really planned. She was very young. She was 18. And at that time, she lived in a small village in Denmark, and it was not well seen having a baby outside marriage. And later on in my life, when I, you know, tried to get some answers from her, and I can come back to that, you know, she really said that had it been at a time where abortion would have been a free choice, I would have been an abortion. She literally has told me that. But that was not an option. I mean, you can always go and do it the illegal way. There were people who did that. But my grandparents, her parents that I'm truly grateful for today, they said, you know what? Keep this baby and we will help you take care of her. I'm glad and they decided to do that. <laughs> we wouldn't be talking. <laughs> yes, yeah, girl, it's here. <laughs> I am too. And uh, I, I actually ended up having a very close, I mean, obviously relationship with my grandparents. They gave me a safe, loving home and my mom's siblings became more or less like my siblings. Like we, I've always been close to her, to her siblings. And, um, and she, she was at an age where she wanted to pursue her career. But that could not happen. This was a very small village. So where she had an option to go into like an apprenticeship was in another city, like 30 minutes drive from where my grandparents lived from her hometown. And at that time, public traffic was not like as it is now in Denmark and people didn't have cars like we have, especially here in America. Everybody has a car when they turn 16, almost like any kid, not any, but a lot of kids have it. It was not like that. At that time, it was very special to have a car. So she moved there and she left me with my grandparents. And I, it wasn't until later 
that I really found out how that unconsciously had installed some beliefs in me about being left by a mom who wanted to pursue her career. So maybe you can start to see some, like why I developed that belief. Right. And what more happened was my grandma at some point got very, very sick and had to be hospitalized. And my grandpa had a very, like he had a, he, he worked at the, the, what is it called? Like the official, like the office, the, com, uh, I forgot the word, like the commute, like the, where they, the town, the town hall. He, he worked at oh, the town hall and had a, an important position there. Mm-hmm. He couldn't just, I mean, at that time as a man, he wouldn't take care of a little baby and, and my mom's siblings went to school. So my grandpa had a friend who had an orphanage and that's where, they brought me for the time it took until my grandmother was healed. And that again, later on, so fast forward, in my mid-20s, I went into a deep depression. Hmm. And um, this is where you were married and raising a family? Yeah. Yeah. This was, this was, yeah. It was almost about the time when I, when I met the father of my kids. And um, I had for years been very angry at my mom. There was a lot of anger built up in me for not having that relationship that I really wanted. And and I was blaming her for a lot of things. And then I got into this deep depression and I was, you know, I was thinking about, okay, maybe if I just ended my life, it would be so much easier. But something in me, kept coming up and no, there's a solution. There's a solution. And I happened to, my mom later on met another man and one of his sisters is a psychologist. And I always been very close to that part of the family that was gifted to me. And I called her and I asked her for help. And that was my first step into healing, into personal development. And this lady, she recommended within a few sessions, the work she did, my depression was gone. Wow. I was on path again. And that started curiosity in me of, whoa. I, I just, there was something in me that like, wow, I really like to know more about all this. And that's when my career also started going in that direction. I was involved with people and team building. And I started later on studying NLP and And when I studied NLP, and this is, here's the thing, and this is what I want to say to people, when we have that inspiration, that seed of inspiration to do things, very often people wait to take action. Who joined us? There she is. Oh my God, what a cutie. That's mine. Now we're just waiting for my dog to (laughs) join us. Let's hope she doesn't walk on a computer, so. All right, I'm sorry. That's adorable. Thanks for introducing her. Animals are attuned to energy, so. I know. I see her tail. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's totally fine. We, were, we talked about that before we went live, that maybe our animals would join us during our conversation. And so what I wanted to say is that so, sometimes if we feel like stuck, and that, but there might be these under layers of limiting beliefs that we are not conscious about Mm -hmm. and it does not have to take a lifetime to move forward and and see things happening in our life and creating the things we truly want when we are ready to just be a little curious about (laughs) ourselves and be open to to, to, to go on a journey and explore ourselves. I mean, I know the way I healed my childhood traumas was by, by, by going in and, and see, you know, by, I did some timeline therapy and by, by really forgiving my mom and also forgiving, forgiving myself for all the anger I had hold on to and blame and fully take back. This, this is the first thing, fully take responsibility for my life. 
And I remember the day when I learned that we have that power. It was such a big aha moment for me. And also a little scary because I was so used and customized to blaming other people, blaming the politicians, blaming how the, you know, I mean, had I not known what I know now today, I would have been more victimized in what's going on in the world and say, oh, this is so scary. But by, which it can be, yeah, let's be real. I mean, it's, it's people are dying out there and people are really struggling financially. But, but what I learned by, by knowing that we, if we take complete, 100%, 100% responsibility for our own lives and learn some tools, of course. And this can be powerful questions we can ask ourselves. It can be how to manage our emotions. And it can be, and th- these are steps I'm, I'm walking the readers through in my books. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness is a big thing, like okay. letting go. I completely agree so much. If the world could get out of, and I've talked about this in, in other podcast episodes, I've done that, um, the world thinks the reality is is victim mentality. Most of the world uh, exists in a world that it's your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You know, they're going, they're always looking outside of themselves. And, and I love the fact that you said when, when it dawned on you that you have the power to take control of your own life, uh, that's fantastic. And of course, forgiveness, um, where all guilt and shame and sense of separation and angst and everything resides. And if you can forgive, properly forgive, it's like a giant weight is off your shoulder. Yeah, beautiful. So true. And it gives us freedom and it gives us peace inside and it gives us the power to change things, which is like, yeah requires some other steps and wisdom to know, okay, mm-hmm. how do we then do that? How do we then move forward from there? Well, and speaking yeah. of that, I, I, I would really, um, really advise our viewers and listeners to pay attention to what Charlotte is saying, because so much of this is profound and wise. And that's going to lead me to ask you some things. You know, I, I recently uh, went over, I got the ebook version of, of Make Your Own Money Again, which is, by the way, on the wall behind her up on the higher there. She has that mountain yep. new book. Up here. Um, and, and so I was interested because, okay, great, this is a book about empowering women and everything. And then I noticed, you know, you're talking about the universal laws and the law of attraction and how they come into play uh, in, in what you teach. And, and, and what part? To, uh, if you want to talk a little bit, you know, we, we both learned uh, uh, the seven essential key universal laws from Christy Whitman and other sources. Um, how does that come into play with what you're talking about and writing about? Well, I found, and this is just, actually, I dedicated a chapter in the first book um, to Christy because I, I found that, yeah. the way, so the, these are ancient teachings, wisdom, and I just, I learned it from Christy and the way she has structured it and is teaching it in the QSCA just totally clicked with me. I mean, I knew about law of attraction way before I entered the QSCA, but adding the understanding of the, of, of, of the other laws that we all live with in the structure was just like, it really, it really landed with me. And, uh, and I, I started applying it and I started to relate to it, to all my life areas and how things happened in my life and, and how, how I could apply them in my life. And, um, and, and I thought, Oh my gosh, I thought if I can teach this to others with my stories and my life experience, I was hoping maybe it could help other, especially women, especially moms who who really struggle with like managing it all and feeling pulled in all directions. And I know, I know, especially as a mom, because I made a decision early on in my life, okay, what kind of mom would I like to be since 
from my life experience, who did I want to be? And I know that many other moms, we all want to do the best for our kids, but sometimes can feel limited. And knowing that we don't have to feel limited mm -hmm. really can ch change a lot. And it's, it's all about, I think the basic things are back to, first of all, know that there is more information out there. We don't have to be stuck where we are now. That's number one. And we can, so what is right now is what is. But just know it does not have to continue to be like that. And we don't have to wait for someone else to come and fix our problems and challenges. But when we take that responsibility, that's when we can start to be free. And I know, and I just want to add that, it can also feel a little scary because when we are customized to blame, it can feel very uncomfortable to suddenly take another jacket on and say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm responsible for my own life. Mm -hmm. That part of the brain will come and say, no, 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 because we're so used to live another way. But if we stick with it and, and continue to learn all the, the steps to really live more deliberately, more purposely, be more and trust and have faith, and and learn that there's way more i mean there's way more between i mean we're sitting here looking into a computer but mm -hmm. I, because i've done it i feel you yeah. <laughs> right it's energy. like the, the, yeah it's all energy and it's it's just like it's just like when we think about our best friends and a friend and then suddenly that best friend we might not have talked forever exactly. that person texts us or call us Right. Or we get these hunches, these, these like ideas of maybe I should go into this store and, and look for the red dress we've been looking for. And there it is. Like, and, and, and this is not coincidences, but these are things that where we understand how quantum physics works, we can work deliberately with it. So we don't have to, life doesn't have to happen to us, but we can, we, we, life happens with us or for us. It, it's not, I think it's a better way to say, life is not happening against us, but it's happening for us. So when contrast, so one of, one of the, one of the, 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 besides from law of attraction, one is, the law of polarity or like diversity that there's always and there's always a solution to a problem there's always the opposite well charlotte if you would allow me let me just go over and tell say tell the uh, viewers and listeners what those seven uh, essential universal laws are number one of course is the law of attraction which is uh, the the umbrella law it's everything else is under it. the law of deliberate creation the law of allowing law of detachment, law of abundance and sufficiency, law of pure potentiality, and the law of polarity. And that is, uh, you know, those are, those are great seven laws to live your life by and understand and what you're saying. I mean, it's just so wise. And, and it is time for people, especially again now with the chaos of the world, for people to start taking responsibility for their own thoughts and their own actions and their own words and walk in integrity with those seven essential laws. And I think this is a good time for me to ask you, because you write about this in your book, and you, this is how you live your life. You call it 360-degree life mastery. What, what exactly is that? Thank you for asking that question. That's something that I have been talking about for, yeah, almost since I started uh, with the coaching here in, in the U.S. after I had stayed home for a couple of years, eight years with my kids. Mm -hmm. I, I, okay, I look at the life as we have all these areas of our life. And many of the listeners have heard about the life wheel, right? And we, 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 so our life is, we can divide life into sections or parts, but really it's all intertwined. So we have, we have our physical body, we have our emotions, we have our 
spiritual life. If we, you know, some people are awakening now and realize how profound it is to learn this by listening to podcasts like you have. Mm -hmm. And, and many who are listening, I know already, you know, living it. So, but, and then we have our family life, we have our career, we have our finances and um, maybe family and friends. So we have all these areas of our life. And um, I mean, that's something I introduced uh, in the book. I invite everybody to kind of give a score, look at how, how on a scale of one to 10, how can we score each of these parts of our life right now and then if we kind of make a let's say for our finances we say from one to ten it's five relationship intimate relationship maybe six um career maybe two if we are not satisfied at all with what we do um with our kids our relationship may be eight and then go all the circle around and then make a line and imagine that the shape of this circle is the wheel of our is the wheel on the car we are driving in in our life and how bumpy that may feel however what i like to change it because it's easy to then see oh yeah that's why and feel sorry for ourselves and again look at here and now but what i want to say is that even though might now right now when we look at our life right now as the wheel we just draw out, we can still feel fulfilled right now by knowing, and, and here's the thing, by knowing that we have the power to create what we want. And here comes, here comes in the questions, the powerful questions that we can start asking and be more conscious about. So instead of focusing here and now, we can start be more deliberate in as what is it that we do want? What is it that we do want? And, and, why, and be more conscious about why we want it and start feel install emote by, by really focus on that. And here it comes in with faith. It comes in with really understanding that we do live in this infinite universe and stop just think about here and now and what's right in front of us, but know that there are unlimited potentiality out there. It's not just by luck that some people are successful and others are not. It's about using these, using this awareness to create that life that we want. And instead of, and then, because what I have realized is that we can actually feel why we work on expanding and developing these areas of our life, we can start feel that real out and feel that we are fulfilled and life is, 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 is more in balance while we continue to work maybe on strengthening our body and being more healthy or developing our relationships or building um, a more strong financial life. Mm -hmm. um, and, but by, by doing the vision work, by start taking actions in each area and be conscious about what we will what we want with our life how we want this wheel to look like and take little actions now then and start and feel into how it feels when we have that ideal relationship or when we have that ideal career and take the little steps then we are move, then know that we are moving in that direction and here's the thing if we start look back and look at other things we have achieved in our life every Everything started with a thought and idea. Everything started with us wanting something. I sometimes give the example. I, when I was in my mid-40s, my kids started doing Taekwondo. And this was something I did as a teenager, but I quit half the way through to black belt. And it's always, I always liked martial arts. Mm -hmm. And when they started, I said, oh, that could be fun to start with. But this, so I decided to sign up. And this time I decided. 
here's the thing. I decided, and we can decide for every area. I decided I wanted to finish. I wanted to become a black belt, a first degree black belt this time. I would not quit. I would do everything it took and I would have fun. So I made that vision. I wanted to have fun. And I, I visualized that I had, that I, that I came to that day when I would receive my black belt and I would wrap it around my wrist and I would tie that knot. And the day I signed up, I felt already being there. Right. It took me four years and there were a lot of struggles. I wore some injuries on the way and it was not just easy, but I showed up for practice and I trusted my trainers like we can hire a coach to help us. I trusted my trainers. I showed up. I had a neck injury. This is actually something you may not know, but I healed that neck injury that weekend five years ago when we met by meditation. Really? Yeah. Wow. My energy work with energy work. Nice. And yeah. So, um, so the back to the, to, to finish the, the life wheel, we, we can feel we have it all right now and feel fulfilled in our life instead of, instead of just looking at here and now. Because this is what a lot of people do wrong. They, they think that when they have $100,000 in the bank account, then I can feel free and relaxed. When I have my ideal business job, then I can feel happy. No, it all starts here now. I, what I, when I went through that black belt four year journey, I, I decided that I wanted to have fun with it. I have fun with it with the kids. And it was also tough sometimes. That's how life is. There will be contrast. There will be challenging showing up. And, that, and that's where that first choice when we start the journey is so important because we can go back to that. It's like an anger. It's like when we throw an anger from a ship, we have that anger to go back to and relate to. Um, so we can, so I don't know, does it, does it give you a picture? We can, we, 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 we can fill this wheel out. So while we work on our life goals, while we work on getting a promotion or while we work figuring out if we should start a business or not, or what kind of business or learn the tactics to run a business, we can feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. well, well, I have to say that, that you're teaching what you're talking about it actually is beautiful because I like the fact that you focus uh, continually on people remembering their inherent power to do these things. But also, I like the, the, your wheel of the 360 degree mastery, life mastery, in that there may be certain sections where you're not quite as fulfilled or satisfied, but overall, you can look at it and feel fulfilled and continue working on bringing those, level, those areas up. And, um, I'm, I'm guessing that gratitude can be a big part of that. Just being grateful for everything you have in your life, even though it may not be ideal. Oh, for sure, Carl. That's very, very important. Like I shared the story about my, my childhood earlier and my mom, and I can tell you today, I'm truly, truly grateful for that childhood. Mm. I'm truly grateful for my mom. I mean, not just that, of course, she chose <laughs> <laughs> to have me, but for my grandparents and for her choosing to pursue her career. Yeah. Even though it installed that, oh, I'm like poor me victimized role. I unconsciously, I chose as a little kid later on because I met people who knew that, yeah, well, maybe you had that story. It was, it was part of my life. I could release that. I could work in and I could go back and I could find the gifts in there. Yeah. And, and I feel like it's a gift now. I can help that, you know, to, to help others to understand that no matter what our background is, no matter what hardship we have been through or are going through now, we can create a vision of we want. And we can use our experience. So it's like, it's like an eight-figure 
like the infinity sign. Okay, mm-hmm. we are here as a person. It's today, it's August, when we record this, August 5, 2020, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have, we have our we have our past, we have our story, and then we have the future that we can create. And right now our brain can work with both. We can choose to release what's here and we can, we can choose to create this in a, in, we can choose with our mind to create a future that looks bright and shiny. Or we can think about, oh my gosh, maybe I lose my job tomorrow. Or maybe the coronavirus virus will, you know, kill even more people. And what will happen with, you know, we can create all this disaster. We can start use the law of deliberate intention. We can start mm-hmm. create what we want. We will, by law of attraction, we will attract that. New ideas will come to us. New inspiration will come to us. Well, and, I'd have to- and, and, and yeah, sorry, yeah, because of the oh. gratitude, be grateful for both and be grateful for things here and now. Start to see, start to look at, at I mean, I know this is something I, I, I remember when I first time heard Wayne Dreyer say he wakes up every morning and the first thing he does was, was he said, thanks, thank you. But I know also, Carl, that when I started learning about how important gratitude is because it changes our emotions, it was not that easy for me. I want to say that. And I've heard that from many others to just do that because I was not, I was so trained to not do it, but always look for more. I was always waiting for things to happen outside of me before I could be happy. I was not naturally trained to think grateful thoughts so it took me a while and this is very important it's i call that success habits gratitude is a huge part of having a successful life a fulfilled life as you said but it may not always be easy if we are not used to it but here's the thing like anything else if we keep doing it we will get better at it it's a matter of just continue to do it. Take little steps every day, like the black belt. Show up to training every single day, and by after hundreds of hours of training, we will get there. I remember in the beginning when I started applying gratitude work, I would write down th- three things every night that I. Could be, I could choose to be grateful for in my life. But in the beginning, I felt it was just up here. Mm. It was up here, and it, I, I couldn't feel the gratitude. Writing it down helped you make it feel real? In the beginning, it didn't. In the beginning, I just felt, oh, it's just up here. <laughs> but by keep doing it yes. and, and, and forgive and do all the other work, like suddenly one day I started like, It was like sinking down to my heart Mm. and then further down to my stomach. And, you know, we, these things can be done through, we can help ourselves move to that state where we can truly feel gratitude faster because that's, that's very powerful, especially the way we want to work with the law of attraction. But I just want to say this because I hear a lot of people say, yeah, I can. I, it sounds good, but I don't know how to do it. But it's, it's about keep doing it, not just give up. Repetition, yeah. Repetition. Repetition with yeah. powerful emotion and thought. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, you, uh, you have said some amazing, beautiful, um, actually very practical uh, things that, that the world would, would do well to pay much attention to. Uh, again. Um, most of the world still does not take responsibility for their own actions, uh, their own thoughts, uh, but they do have the inherent power, each one of you listening and watching. And I'm going to go back um, to your book because I, I was pretty intrigued with it. Um, uh, it's um, how to make your own money again, right? That's exactly it. Um, I find it interesting. You, you say that money, and let's let's go back into the principles of that book. You say that money is energy and it likes speed and structure. What exactly does that mean? Mm-hmm, yeah, I there's something I realized 
that it's really money is not different to anything else we want in our life, but we can have so much meaning attached to it. And I for sure had. Mm-hmm. I remember in my childhood how I learned. I, had, I, I, I developed so many means about rich people are like, bad people or it's dangerous to be, you would be looked at bad if you are rich or mm. um, money or evil. There are all these movies with rich people that are not behaving nice and kindly in the world. And there are also a lot of other movies, but I had all these beliefs. But what I, when I started to, to be curious about what made some people more successful with money and others not, and started to look at myself. What beliefs did I have about money? How did I show up for money? And how did I not? How did I think about money? And really dive deep into it. I've, I've read a lot of books about this. And some of the things and it was the, the thing about the speed. And I believe it was Joe Vitale. Yeah, I heard it from first that. time. Book, I, yeah. I believe, yeah. And, um, and this is the thing, it's back to the inspiration that we all get these because we're all connected with each other, the energy. We are all, I mean, if we can look under a microscope, we will see that we're all energy. And really what we see, touch and feel here is just 4% of us mm-hmm. because yeah, we then have our soul and that's con- connected to the divine. And, and, and so if, if we want to work more with the energy of money and we start set intentions and we start get these ideas of what we could do to change our current money situation, the it's important to take the action and with the money like speed it's really like everything the universe likes speed the the universe the worst will provide all the ideas and and inspiration to us that we want and the more we take action on it the more we receive it and that's the same with money and because i'm talking about money that's why i'm giving that example there that that if we that if we take more instead of stopping and and questioning oh maybe i'm not good enough to do this mm-hmm. maybe i'm not ready maybe i'm not skilled enough to to apply for that job instead instead then trust it and say oh okay what can i do now to move a step closer if let's say someone wants to start a business and have an idea after thinking about how can I make money from doing something that really makes me fulfilled and someone gets an idea of having a business, start his or her own business and then an idea pops down and I'm doing that because that's the spiritual center. That's usually, that's yeah, where we are connected to, to the higher rounds. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that movement. If we take action on it, the universe will say, oh, she's listening. We can call it God or goddess or the divine or the infinite intelligence. It's the energy. We will receive more because then we will, it's like, it's like we will, we will, we will, the universe will see us as as like a faucet. So we all have access to infinite information and when we it's like so if we see ourselves like this is something many teachers have taught and right now i'm being mentored by marianne williamson and she's using this also and it just makes so much sense to me what a great lady (sighs) (laughs) yes she cares so much Mm -hmm. And um, so if we see ourselves like a faucet and we can choose to turn so a faucet and that those ideas and inspiration comes through us, we can choose to 
open the tab or close it. But when we start to open it, comparing that stream of information, intelligent information, ideas, or, or, or situations, new opportunities, people we bump into coming to us mm -hmm. from turning that tepid on and allow, by using the questions we talked about really er, can start it, take responsibility, one, right? And then start to ask, what do I want? And, and start to see that wheel feel out and, and then be open and trust that the information, open the faucet so the water can run through and take action on it, more will come. Mm -hmm. So we won't build up all these blocks inside of us, all the lime inside. <laughs> we, it, it would be like more a constant stream flowing through us. I remember a few situations where I, as a person of experiences that, that I have experienced, like when, after I had stayed home for eight years and suddenly I could see one of my kids, I had a homeschool for a, a short period of time. He went back to school and suddenly I had so much time because I was not involved with volunteering any longer. And I was like, Oh, maybe. And I had that hunch, that idea. Maybe it's time now to start my business in America. Even though it was freaking frightening, I trusted it. I talked to my husband about it and we thought, okay, maybe I should take a coaching certification again to just refresh everything and learn everything in English since I had done everything in Danish in the past. And it's like, okay, let me start, look. And then I followed the inspiration that I can, let me go on to the net. Let me search, use these words. And pop, there came Christy up, like yeah. out of nowhere. I never heard about it before, mm. but I trusted it. Yeah. I, I, I did the home, I did what I, and I signed up for that. Later on when I decided to write my book, and this is something that had been within me for quite a few years, but there was one day when, so I'm sending out inspirational newsletters and one, one of my readers came to me and she said, you should really write a book, Charlotte. Mm. And that was, that was the day when I decided, okay, I pulled out the file and I said that and I realized the here and now, I realized I cannot do this on my own. I need some help. So I used that contrast, like feeling stuck. And I said, what do I want? I need to find someone who can help me get this book out in the world. So that was the, what do I want? And I, I was specific. I, and then what I wanted you know, I wanted something I could use in my business. And, and, and I, so, so that was kind of the why, part of the th second question, the why. And I felt like, oh, could it be fun to find someone? So I started playing with, what if, what if I could find someone easily who could help me write this book? Two days after I was cleaning, headsets in my ear, I was vacuuming, listening to Oprah. <laughs> 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 and one of these ads came up and usually I'll just take my phone and say, skip. And I did that again because I wanted to listen to Oprah. So I pressed, pressed script. What happened was that ad for some reason just kept coming up. And it was this lady who is a book coach that I have seen before and always felt like, oh my gosh, she looks amazing, but she's way up, like more high end that, I mean, she's better than what I deserve. I had that like right. mindset on. So I was like, no, that's, that's not the one. I was trying to ignore it, but she kept, I could not skip. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. That's I could true. not skip that ad. Yeah. And here's the thing. I listened. Right. I stopped the vacuum cleaner and I sat down and I listened to her. And in that moment, I knew it was her, Angela Loria. And I went through the application to, you have to apply to write a book with her. But it was just, but that's, I, I just want to share these examples because this is what happens when we start to be open. The teacher will come when the student is ready and vice versa. And, you know, I just want to point out a couple things, too. And plus, I'm going to wind up here. I try to keep the show around an hour. And, and we, gosh, we could talk forever. I mean, you, you are just amazing, filled with such beauty and light and wisdom. Um, I have a sticker in the back window of my car that says, Dare, Risk, Dream. 
And I look at that every single day and, and we all have doubts and, and worries and that type of thing. And, and so that reminds me. So you find little things to motivate and inspire you. And, and also you were talking about turning on the faucet and allowing the flow of abundance come into your life. Um, many years ago, I was fortunate to go to um, a live workshop with one of the 20th century and early 21st century icons of inspiration and positivity, Zig Ziglar. And Zig had a great example about how to get uh, money and abundance flowing in your life and said, and you work and you work. It's like if people remember, there's, you could go some, still to some uh, local parks. They have an old-fashioned hand pump to, for water. And you have to pump, and you're pumping, and you're pumping, and pumping it as hard as you can, and nothing's coming. You go, where is the water? Where is the water? Where is the money? Right? And you're pumping, and you're working hard, and minutes go by, and all of a sudden, a little trickle of water starts, you know, a little trickle of money starts. And you keep pumping and pumping and pumping, and then finally, uh, the water starts really flowing and flowing and flowing, and then finally, it only takes a couple more pumps like this, and the water is just flowing and flowing because you put the work and the effort and the focus in on it. And finally, you've tapped into that eternal stream of well-being that's eternally flowing. And it was such a beautiful example, and I've never forgotten that, you know. And, and you have to be patient. You have to be focused. You have to place your thoughts where you really want them. A Course in Miracles, you mentioned this early, you know, thoughts, uh, everything thoughts with a, start, a, cor uh, with a thought. A mer Course in Miracles um, says that every thought, uh, develops form on some level, at some level, maybe in a different spectrum that we can't see yet. So you have to pay attention to the power of your thoughts. Um, you know, again, Charlotte, I'm sorry, I, I just, you know, I'm going to try to keep this around an hour. You are just so filled with so much amazing information. Your, your books, again, uh, people, I can't uh, suggest enough that you check out uh, Make Your Own Money Again. And uh, again, it is um, aimed towards women, but any man could get a uh, great insight out of this book and her latest book, Fulfilled uh, Working Mom, which we didn't even touch on. Uh, Charlotte, where can people go to find out about you and access your books and uh, even get some coaching with you? Well, yeah, I mean, the books are uh, available on Amazon and Make Your Own Money is also in audio there. And But I, I do have, I am, providing a free PDF copy. So if they, if people go to www.makeyourownmoneyagain.com, makeyourownmoneyagain.com, they can get a free copy of Make Your Own Money. And that way they also have direct access to me because it will come straight from my personal email. That's how I got my copy. Yeah. And yeah. you have a Facebook page, right? I do have a Facebook page. So every, I mean, I'm, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Charlotte Freeborg. I have a business uh, Facebook page, Charlotte Freeborg International. And that's F-R-I-B-O-R-G. Yes. yes. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I, what a blast talking to you. And again, like I said, you know, maybe you and I should just <laughs> call each other every once in a while and talk because let's do it. You just have absolutely amazing information and the people watching and, and listening, I, I surely hope that you, you, you take the heart which Charlotte has taught and spoken about here. And uh, Charlotte Freeberg, thank you again so much for, for being on the show. Uh, namaste and much love and light to you. Thank you so much, Carl, for having me here. I, I mean, I truly enjoyed our conversation here. So, yeah, let's, let's continue the conversation. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This has been another episode of World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with me, your host, Carl Gruber, a certified law of attraction life coach. I welcome you to tune in to each and every episode of this podcast, World Awakenings, as we open your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that all of the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to the truth of all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how much they play an all-important role in our moment-to-moment -moment everyday life. Much love and light to you, my friend. Thank you for tuning in.